up, you guys? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Lydian mode. Now, this is actually a mode that has been made famous by a lot of guitar players like Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Kiko Loreiro, and just a ton of different jazz guitar. Now, before I begin with the lesson, I just want to let you guys know that you can now go over to my Patreon page. You're going to find all the different backing tracks like the one I did at the beginning of the video. You're fine. You'll find different scale diagrams um, like different scale diagrams for Lydian specifically in this video but for the different scales that I talk about in all of my different videos so you can find everything there and all the while you will be supporting the channel um, in an active manner now the Lydian scale has an intervallic construction of one two three sharp four five six and seven and through this formula you can now figure out what type of chords you can actually play it so just by looking at the formula and staticking it in thirds you can figure out different chords. So if you have one, three, and five, you're gonna be able to play it over a major chord. Keep stacking it at that seventh, it's gonna be a major seventh chord. Keep stacking, major nine, major nine, sharp 11, and then major 13, sharp 11. So those are most of the chords that you can actually play Lydian over. There's also some different types of chords, like different sus types of chords, and stacked chords, and slash chords. But for now, I'm just going to be talking about the ones that stem from the, from the major scale. Stacking the Lydian scale in thirds. Now, there's three different approaches that I like to use when learning a new mode. Now, I'm going to be talking about the relationship with the parent scale, that's going to be number one. Then the intervallic structure, which I just mentioned, that's going to be number two. And then number three is just going to be the different scale patterns. I tend to recommend starting out with either the parent scale relationship and then graduating over to the intervallic construction or just going over to the intervallic construction and starting from there. I do not recommend just doing the different patterns because that's going to hinder a little bit of your knowledge and you might end up being able to play the scale but not really being able to apply it. But if you already know the theory behind the mode, then I guess that's also fine. I just tend to prefer looking at it as different intervals. It's going to be a little bit more useful. So coming back to the relationship with the parent scale, all that's going to mean is that you look at a chord that you want to play Lydian over and you're just going to look at what major scale that Lydian scale is actually related almost like a relative minor thing that type of relationship that you find but we're going to be doing it now with Lydian and to do that you're just going to have to go up a fifth from your either major or major seven major seven sharp eleven whatever chord you want to play Lydian over just go up a fifth from that and play the major scale from there now in the case of the solo that I did at the beginning of the video I'm in the key of A Lydian. What that's going to mean is you're going to go up a fifth, which is going to be E, and you're going to play the E major scale over that A. Now the next approach is the intervallic construction. What this is going to mean is you're just going to look at the different intervals within the Lydian scale. You're just going to visualize those different intervals on your guitar. So you're going to go one, two, three, sharp four, modifying it from the major scale, fifth or five, six, seven, and keep on going from there. That's going to open up a little bit of more knowledge in terms of what you're doing on the fretboard. So I really recommend playing and thinking about the different scales in that fashion. Now the Lydian scale is going to sound something like this. Finally, it's just the scale diagrams. You've all seen different scale diagrams. The pros of learning it this way and just playing around with this is that you can get some muscle memory out of it. I do like the playing different scales or, or different exercises using different patterns, but I do prefer um, just looking at it as the different intervals. Even if you're thinking about the actual pattern, keep thinking about what note exactly you're landing on. That way, when you're improvising, you can reach for specific notes. You want to end um, a, a run on the ninth. You want to end a run on the third. You're going to have complete control of what you're doing. All right, so that's it for this video. You can follow me on any type of social media. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. 
and I'm also on Patreon if you want to support the channel a little bit more actively. If you want to check out any of my products that I have out there, I have my book, The Art of Scale Weaving, and I have two different instructional box sets with the guys from Guitar Tutorials. And finally, if you're interested in different private lessons, just go over to my website, juanantoniomusic.com. You can sign up for one-to-one -one lessons over Skype. Now, I want to give a quick shout out to Raul Tisse, James Swartz, and Tom Burns for helping make this video happen through their contributions on Patreon. All right, thanks for watching.